Okay, and we are back. Excellent. So uh, it's a great pleasure uh, to introduce Sam. Uh, all right. Hello. Hello, Sam. Where are you from right now? I mean, where are you I, right now? Um, sure. I'm coming to you live from Galicia in the north of Spain. Oh, excellent. That's, that's great. It's a great place. Galicia is a great place. Great food. Yeah. I'm jealous. Uh, <laughs> so you're going to tell us about simple, open music recommendation. Great subject. Very, very excited to hear. Take it away, Sam. OK. Um, so thanks for watching this talk. I am, I'm actually an operating systems developer, but I've developed an interest in, in recommendation engines recently. I'm also a musician and a keen music listener, so that's what drives my interest. Now this talk, the emphasis is on simple, so I can promise you there's going to be no machine learning, because interesting as it is, it's not very simple. And hopefully this will be something anyone can understand. I am going to go into details and do some demos, but the idea is that it's it's a recommendation engine that we can all we can all understand. So you've probably noticed the recommendation engines are everywhere these days. Think about your day to day. Have you done something in response to a recommendation algorithm? Maybe you spoke to someone on a social network because an algorithm showed you their post. Maybe you bought something because you were recommended it online. Maybe you got into an argument because an algorithm showed you something you disagree with. Maybe you listened to a song. So my interest in music means that I use different music services and I found the, the recommendations sometimes very good, sometimes not, sometimes predictable. I thought, given recommenders are taking over the world, maybe I can make a recommendation algorithm, and then at least I'll know what's going on with it. But I'm an operating systems developer, so I have to start from scratch. I thought, what goes in to a recommendation algorithm? Well, data goes in, then there's a process, and then some more data, which is hopefully, hopefully more interesting, will come out of the other side. Uh, in the case of a music recommender, then on the right-hand side, we will get a list of songs. On the input side, it's more complicated. You might take a music collection. Well, a music collection is really a list of songs, but where the order isn't important. You might take social data, like other people's playlists. Well, those are also lists of songs. Maybe you'll take the history of what someone listened to in the past, which is also a list of songs ordered by time. And maybe you look at analysis of the pieces of music that might say how fast it is, how dark it is, whether it's metal or ska or gospel, which we could really keep that data in a playlist as well if we can store that data alongside the songs. So we can already simplify this back down to a playlist goes in, some kind of processing happens and a playlist comes out. As long as we can do arbitrary playlists, then we can have this simple model. Um, that's nice because this, to me, looks like a shell pipeline. Uh, as an operating systems developer, I spend a lot of time writing shell pipelines. Um, as data scientists, we more likely to use something like IPython, Jupyter. Um, the same tools work for modeling pipelines, whatever you want to use. So. How do we represent a playlist? I've been using this simple JSON format where each line is a JSON object and a set of attributes describe the songs. And I've created some Python code wrapped up in a command line tool called Calliope or Calliope, depending how you want to pronounce it. And that allows me to create some pipelines. So here's a very simple I wouldn't call it a recommender yet, but a playlist generation pipeline. So it asks the tracker search engine on my, my computer to, to show all of the songs I have. And then it shuffles the list, chooses five, and then uses another command line tool to select just the title and the creator. Um, there we go, we created a playlist already. 
I want to talk a bit more about the format. Firstly, the fact that it's a list of JSON objects is deliberate. That makes it more usable in a traditional command line because you can start the tool on the left and it prints an object and then another one and then another one. And the next tool in the pipeline can read these as you go. So you don't have to generate a huge list of a million songs, wait for that, then shuffle it. In the case of shuffle, you do have to wait. But in the case of other processing, you can do it a line at a time. And it's a kind of lazy evaluation. Apart from that, the playlist format is not special. It's an adaptation of SPIF, XSPF, which is uh, already existing since 2006, I think. Uh, it's a standard, pretty common playlist format. Uh, it's based on XML, which I have not used because it's no longer 2006. But pretty much everything else is the same. Uh, one really cool thing about SPIF is it's described as portable. In the case of a playlist, being portable means that it's not tied to a specific uh, streaming or storage medium. If you have a list of files on your computer, that's not portable. You can't play it on a different computer. So the way SPIF works is you record details about the song, like title, artist, and then later you resolve it to some actual content. So I want to dive in already with some demos to show how this works and how easy it is to play with it. These are all live demos. Things can break. Uh, please bear with me. But let's let's see what happens. So I've got a playlist here. But I can't play the playlist because it's just a, a JSON object. So what if we resolve the playlist against the Spotify web API? This is using an API, P, API key that I've got saved locally. And out the pipeline comes another JSON object. I'm going to run this into the JQ tool so it comes out in color. There we go, much better. So now you can see we've got the title, the creator, and we've got a load of metadata from Spotify, including somewhere. Well, we should have a location field. But now we don't. This changed recently. But we have enough information that we can generate a Spotify URL. Um, what about a different service? We could resolve against Music Brains. Same input. And uh, this, you would expect that to work. Ah, the command is different. So I'm going to annotate it with some information from Music Brains. Again, it's a live demo. It's, the results are cached, but obviously my cache is empty. So if I run this a second time, it will be fast. OK, and now we have some information from Music Brains. Um, I could also resolve this against files on my local computer. There's another command which interfaces with the Beats music library, which is a cool Python tool to organize your music library. So I can ask Beats for a list of all the tracks. Uh, it's quite slow because there's some improvements needed in Beats. In fact, that's too slow. Let me show you albums instead. OK. Hopefully, by now, you're seeing that all this tool Calliope does, really, is it's a toolkit for reading data from disparate places and writing it out in a standardized format, which is the first thing we need to do some kind of interesting recommendations. Most of these tools are simple. They are a few hundred lines of Python, or a thousand lines, maybe, are the more complicated ones. And I intend for them to stay that way. Now, this is a nice way to generate playlists. But ah, I also want to show you that you can export to a number of different playlist formats. So now we generated our, our Resolve Spotify playlist. I can now export it in XSPF format, for example. 
and I can now import that into a music player application or put it on my iPod or anything. So back to the slides. Let's talk a little bit about Spotify. Spotify is probably the number one in music recommendations as of today. By their own numbers, they have thousands of engineers working on the product. They have thousands of data pipelines running constantly. Um, they have 50 million tracks, um, a quarter of which nobody's ever listened to. And they are capturing half a trillion events every day. So that's a lot of events per user. I think that's about 250 million users, right? So I think how many events they're capturing per user. They know a lot about you, more than just a list of songs that you listen to. Uh, what can they do with that data? Quite a lot. Can we compete with Spotify in the open source world? That would be difficult, right? Because we don't have 16,000 engineers at our disposal. But we also don't need to. Something, anything is better than nothing, right? So an open source music recommender, even a very basic one, is already kind of fun. It's already helping us learn about music recommendations, and it's already helping us not depend on Spotify. So if we're going to recommend songs, we need more than just randomness. We need some data. I'm going to talk about some open places and some not open places that we can get data from. Firstly, Music Brains, which is a website. It's kind of a catalog. So you can go on Music Brains and you can look up any music release, any song, and it will tell you way more information than you ever wanted. It can tell you when and where something was recorded, what record label it was on, who else has released music on that record label, who produced the albums. Uh, when they were born, huge amounts of data. The data is all open data. It's released under an open license. The website itself is open. Uh, it's maintained by volunteers. So it's a really cool data source to use. And obviously, Calliope interfaces with that and lets you make use of the, the Music Brains data. So I have lots of ideas of fun things like recommending artists on the same record label or from the same place. Listen Brains is from the same team as Music Brains, and it's a way to record your listening history. So you can hook it up to your music player. You can install a browser add-on called, what's it called? Web Scrobbler, and that'll record things you play in your web browser to Listen Brains. You can look at other people's listens, and it gives you some kinds of analysis about what you've been listening to. So start using that. It's really fun. And in future, it's going to mean you can get better music recommendations. Of course, Spotify, if you use Spotify, they record your listening habits as well, but they won't give it back to you. Even if you go through the long process of request all my data, um, which they have to do legally, they still only give you one year of your listening history. They won't give you everything unless you specifically ask for it. So if you're not, start using Listen Brains. It's more fun. This website in the bottom left is Last.fm, which is actually an older website for recording what you listen to. It's not an open website. It's owned by um, CBS Interactive, I think. Um, but Calliope can also interface with that. I have been recording the music I listen to for years, and I used to do this with Last.fm. Last.fm has an API as well with a lot of tags created by users. So there's an interesting data source. You can look up an artist and see what millions of users have labeled it as. And we can use that for recommendations. Finally, Spotify actually has a really powerful API. And you can access Spotify's own data. So my last image in the bottom right has Spotify's, an example of the Spotify analysis you can get for a song, like how danceable it is, uh, what key it's in, whether it's got lots of speech, whether it sounds acoustic. Now. I don't think you can query 5 million songs using this API, but you can probably query 20 or 30 songs for free with no problem. So there's a lot of interesting data we can use. I'm going to show a couple more demos 
of things that you can do with the listening history. Now, I said to use listen brains. I'm a bad example here because I'm still using LastFM. So I'm going to be showing the uh, LastFM history command. Um, Calliope doesn't yet support listen brains, but it will. Uh, it be a fun thing to contribute if you want to join in the project. Let me show you what the LastFM history command can do. So if I give it my username and I say, that's not the command. Uh, that's the command. So I say, give me a list of the scrubbles, which is the last five songs I listened to. And there we go. There's the last five songs I listened to in the form of a playlist. Um, let's mine this data a bit more. So I can ask what artists I've listened to. I wonder if I've got this one recorded in my backlog. Yes. So I'm asking it for all the artists I've listened to in the last six months. So I'm saying there's an SQL database in the back end here, which I'm not going to show you. But in the background, this is scraping the last FM data, putting it in an SQL database so that we can query it locally. And now I'm saying query everything I've listened to in the last six months and only return things which I listened to 10 times or more. And then I'm going to select just the creator field because that's the only one we care about. So here's a list of all the artists I discovered in the last six months. And I must have liked them because I listened to them 10 times or more. Um, say what you want about my taste in music. It's quite obscure. But now we could perhaps make a playlist of these artists. Uh, I'm not going to show you how. What am I going to show you? Ah, here's another interesting thing we can do. Kind of the inverse. I can say, show me all the tracks which I didn't play in the last one year. This is going to be a lot of tracks, I think. Let's see how many it is. I'm going to count how many it is using the word count. So 34,000 tracks, which I haven't listened to in the last year, but I listened to before that. Um, how can we make a playlist? Let's randomly pick five songs. OK, so there's an interesting playlist, five songs that I haven't listened to in the last five years. Is there anything else we can do? Select. OK. The last thing I want to talk about before we break a bit for questions is the select command. So shuffle is fine, but there's nothing really too smart going on there. We're taking the data, randomly shuffling it, and spinning it out. That's already a lot better than nothing. But let's do something a bit more advanced. So the select command uses a simple type of algorithm called a local search. And so I can feed in this data, randomize it, and then I can say, give me a playlist with a duration of 60 minutes. Now, because there's a pipeline, I need to put a dash to tell each command to read from the previous pipeline. Let's see what this comes up with. Actually, 60 minutes is quite long. Let's have a 30 minute playlist so that it, hopefully it fits on the screen. Hopefully this doesn't take too long. In fact, uh, this isn't going to work because we haven't annotated it with the duration information. So that's possible, but it's outside the scope of this talk. What I would do next would be to resolve the files somehow, either against my local music collection or against music brains to find out how long they are. And then I would have the duration field. And then I could actually select them based on the duration. But because time is short, I'm going to move on to the last slide, which is a paper I read. And this is where I got the idea for the select command. So it's from 2008. And you can read this online for free. Uh, the link is in the slides, which are in my talk. And it uses what's called a local search algorithm 
to recommend playlists. Local search is quite a simple algorithm in the sense that it's what a person might do. If you had to choose from a pool of a thousand songs and you had some constraints, then you start by picking one and you pick another and eventually you've got too many and you throw some of them away and then you pick some more until your playlist fits the constraints. There's more to it than that, but that's, that's the fundamental. And this paper is a really interesting read. They demonstrate recommending music generating playlists by defining a series of constraints. So here's an example from the paper of one of the tests they did in their research. And there's a list of different constraints. Now the right hand side is, um, this is an academic paper, so it's quite mathematical, but on the left hand side in the description column, you can see the first constraint is that all the songs should be different. The second constraint is that they should be released between 1980, 2001. The third constraint is that 20% should be Stevie Wonder, always a good choice, and so on. And a local search algorithm can take a collection of songs and it can find the best, not the best, but a result which satisfies those constraints. And the, the select command is an implementation of that. Now it's not a complete implementation, although this is very simple, but this is how I really think we're gonna get some engaging and some useful open source music recommendations. So just to summarize, recommendation engines are a thing, they're here to stay. Kids now are growing up watching YouTube and using recommenders every day, and they're gonna become more and more a fact of life. The Calio project aims to make simple, fun music recommendations. It's a project you can hack on and use right now. You can pip install it and run it from the command line. Um, it's full of bugs, so please open issues and merge requests with whatever you find. It's something I work on in my spare time and I don't have time to polish it. Um, and one final point, I think the design of Calliope is much more important than the code. I think the model of simple self-contained tools which communicate with a well-defined format can work for any type of recommendations, not just music. It can work for any programming language, not just Python. And with that, I'm interested to see if there are any questions. Let me, I'll leave the screen sharing, but that's the end of the talk. All right, fantastic. Um, this is where we normally have an applause, but uh, we'll play it later uh, after your after the questions. Uh, you were uh, very, very clear. Um, and I think it's a great idea to have a recommendation system, which is open source and uh, everybody can contribute to. Um, there are a number, there are a few questions. OK, great. So I will uh, uh, I will copy them and uh, in the banners uh, I will. Uh... All right. So I will show you the first, and I will ask you the first question. We still we st have more than five minutes, so it's plenty of time. So you mentioned this uh, uh, algorithm to uh, create a, a playlist out of some uh, a music collection and uh, some constraints. What if the constraints are not, uh, you know, the system is not able to satisfy them? That's a good point. I mean, it's up to you in a way. The I didn't mention this, but the algorithm is implemented with a Python library called Simple AI, which you can you can configure in various ways. So one thing you can do is say only iterate n times. In fact, you want to limit it because if you don't put any limitation, then the algorithm will iterate forever and you have an infinite loop. So you put a limit of, say, iterate one million times. And if the constraints aren't fulfillable within that time, then it will return the best thing it found within one million iterations. So for a recommendation engine, I think that's fine because if it returns a playlist that's not perfect, it doesn't really matter. You can still listen to it and maybe you enjoy it. So I think that's the right, the right result for this kind of thing. Cool, yeah, absolutely. Another question. Uh, 
here. Is there an interface for, um, you know, say open source, you know, music player like MPD or, or, or others? Okay. Um, there's nothing specific to MPD at the moment. It's possible to add that um, as another Python module. But in many cases, it's not needed because there is an import module and that can read existing playlist formats. So if your music player can import and export in a format like XSPF or M3U, then Calliope can import and import that already. So it's possible to interface, but it's often not needed. You can often just export and import using standard playlist formats. Cool. Absolutely. By the way, I really love the fact that you're using Beats. I also use that mm -hmm. library to organize my my library, yeah, my music library, and I found it to be fantastic. Really a great yeah, piece of... Quite an, quite yeah, an go ahead. Go ahead. Um, another question. Uh, what next development are you planning uh, for your Calliope or, you know, system you know what things are you either working on right now or are you planning for for the future the near future that's a very interesting question actually i don't have an immediate answer um one thing we just added um someone contributed some much better resolvers so you can now resolve songs on spotify and music brains much more accurately so i'm interested in exploring those a bit more um maybe not developing calliope itself but developing some more examples. Um, there is a, the documentation is online. There was a link in my slides and that has a lot of examples. And so probably the future developments will be adding more examples and more things that you can try out and kind of just fixing bugs in the, the existing tools. Awesome. But contributions are welcome. And by the way, um, that was going to be my next question. <laughs> Good segue. <laughs> How would uh, somebody contribute? You know, maybe um, you know, fixing bugs on uh, on the GitHub repo or or what? Yeah, as as with all sort of community developed projects, the the best way to to get involved is to try it. Think of what you want to do, and you will certainly find some bugs and get involved fixing those. Uh, the documentation the documentation is fairly complete, but um, it can always have more examples. Um, and think about some fun things you might want to see. In particular, I haven't done much using Music Brains yet, so we can fetch the Music Brains data, but I'm interested to see the things I described, like recommending playlists based on all the same record label or all the same geographical location. So that would be an interesting thing to work on. And I think all the pieces are there. Yeah, makes sense. Very cool. Uh, somebody, uh, Jürgen, is correcting me. It's on GitLab, not on GitHub. But uh, excellent. Um, a question, um, and then I think we can uh, go to one ad. I think that's the way to, it works. And then the next speaker. Um, is there a way, or are you thinking about adding a way if, the, if what I'm asking is not already there, uh, whereby you can get a big, bigger corpus of music than the one that you have locally and use that to suggest new songs which you haven't heard because you don't, you don't have them in your collection? Yeah, that's a really interesting question. Of course, anything that can explore playlists can serve as a, as a corpus. So you can export things like the charts. Um, Spotify has huge playlists, which we can, I think we can already export playlists from Spotify. So you could perhaps start by all of their, um, you know, weekly playlists and then generate recommendations from that. Or of course the Music Brains database is open. So if you wanted the biggest possible corpus, I'd say, Download the Music Brains database and <laughs> work with that. That's a big job, though. It's a big job. <laughs> Indeed. Well, Sam, thank you so much again. Very interesting talk and a great project. Thank you so much. Okay, thanks a lot.